on the left. All right, just far enough, boys. Unbuckle them. Let's take them, Craig. How bad did he hit you? I'll let that one's done for. How about him? Last line. I can't see. Help me. Help me, someone, help me. I can't see. Thad Janik and Clegg Wiley. On the afternoon of July 7th, 1868, they blazed their way into our bank in Denver, gunned down our banker Sam Gallagher and forced his daughter Mary to open the vault for them. They'd stuffed two canvas bags full of gold and greenbacks and ridden off with $71,000. That's a big chunk of money to take out of a town of 6,000 population. On our police force, there are only nine men. I'm a detective on that force named Smith. My partner is George Romack. We take our orders from our chief, John Richards, and his orders had been to bring back that money and the men who stole it. We had the men all right, but not the money. And only one man could lead us to it. And he was blind. Yeah, he's blind all right. Will he ever see again? Hard to tell. You mean I don't have a chance? I didn't say that. Last time I saw a case like yours, a man got his sight back completely. Pressure on the optic nerve, an operation relieved it. Then operate on me. I'm no surgeon. Closest eye specialist is a thousand miles away in St. Louis. And his price comes high. I'll pay him anything he wants. With what? I got the money. You talk like it was yours. Look, Jenny. I'm sorry about what happened to your eyes. We'll try to help you if we can, but you're going to have to help us, too. Tell us where you hid that money. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? Listen, lawman. I may never see you again, but you won't see the money either. You finished, Doc? Yeah. Uh, I'll send over a bottle of medicine to help with the pain. I'll look in again tomorrow. Hey, Chief, you get that telegram from Santa Fe yet? No, not yet. But you boys shouldn't mind waiting. Jail's like a home to you. What do you think, Smitty? What are we going to do about that money? He's never going to talk. The only one thing we can do is some men together and search that whole valley. Well, that valley's 30 miles long. He could have hit it anywhere. He's right. I'm afraid it's a wild goose chase. Well, this particular wild goose is worth over $70,000. I think it's worth a try. So they finally caught up with you, sad boy. Who are you? An old friend of yours, Ben Avery. Avery? Yeah, my brother Rex is here, too. We helped you pull a little job a couple of years ago. The bank at Echo City, remember? Oh, yeah. I remember. That was, uh, quite a haul. And maybe you also remember you didn't hang around and divvy it up. He just grabbed it and lit out. Where's it now, Thad? You ever hear of wine, women, and song? No, I can believe that. 
What are you boys in here for? Suspicion of robbing a stagecoach. Only we were in jail in Santa Fe when it happened. Sounds like you made another haul, Thad. Where'd you hide that money? Now, I don't know what money you're talking about. I'm not about to tell you. You know something? I'm glad about what happened to your eyes. Real glad. We'd searched Locust Valley for three full days, trying to find the money Janik had hidden. But it rained the first day out and washed away any tracks we might have followed. We had no luck at all. And then at the bank came a hint of further trouble. When I told Mary Gallagher and some of her depositors that we hadn't found their money, a desperate mortgage-ridden farmer spoke for the others. Either you get Janet to talk, he said, or we will. There are ways of forcing him. Mitty, they don't mean to use force. They're just scared. That money means life or death to them. I know that. Well, isn't there anything else we can do? There might be. Mary, you said the other day you'd give a $2,000 reward. Does that still hold? Of course. I'll see you later. Danny, what do you want? I'm in the office. I want to talk to you. How would you like a chance to get your eyes back? Don't say that, Smith. Not unless you really mean it. I mean it. Well? This town needs that money you stole real bad. You let me be your eyes and guide us to it. The money's back in the bank. We'll send to St. Louis and get that specialist. Bring him out here and let him operate on you. The bank put up a $2,000 reward. That'll pay the cost. What happens to me after that? That'll be up to a jury. The operation's the only trade we can make. How about it? All right, you got a deal. When do we leave? I'll let you know. Here's that telegram from Santa Fe. Put him back, will you, Jim? I don't know. I don't like it. What if he's got friends on outside waiting to help him? The kind of friends he have would keep the money. He knows that. It's about the Averys. I'm gonna have to turn him loose. You really think Janik's gonna lead you to it? it? May take some time. I'll need a pack horse and some supplies. <laughs> offered you a deal, didn't he? What was it? Nothing. Was it about the money? Look, Thad, don't be a fool. He's a lawman. If you want to make a deal, make it with us. We're your own kind. Yeah, yeah. I know that. That's what I don't like about you. Oh, come on, Thad boy. I was just trying to do a favor for a blind man. No hard feelings. Here. Have a smoke. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> That's your idea of a joke? Burning a blind man? All right, you men. Your horses are out in front. Get on them and keep riding. Well, what do you know? The chief found out we were telling the truth. And probably for the first time in your life. Now, get him. See you in the morning, Johnny. We're leaving early. The sooner we leave, the sooner that eye specialist gets here. Don't forget to write. As we headed out of Denver toward Locust Valley, the hopes of many people rode with us. But my spirits were high. I thought the only problem I faced was whether or not a blind man could find the proverbial needle in a haystack. Where 
Rock Creek turnoff. Trail splits here. North Fork follows the ridge. South Fork goes down to the river. We took the South Fork. You sure? Is there a big red rock up ahead? Sort of shaped like an Indian head? Yeah, just off to the right. We rode just under it. There's a trail about a half mile down the river. That's where we turned off. you couldn't see. I can't, but I can hear. There was a waterfall not too far away. Hear it? Yeah, I hear it. Mister, when a man loses his eyes, he's got to see with his ears. Mine ain't lying to me. This is the place, all right. I don't see any side trail. We turned off by a big pine tree. Its trunk was split down the middle. You got a good memory, Johnny. There it is just up ahead. fast, we can catch up with them easy. We don't want to catch up with them. Not yet. That rabbit sure smells good. So does the coffee. Funny how a man takes all his senses for granted when he's got them all. I ever get my eyes back, Smith, I'm going to be a changed man. I'll never be able to get my fill of just looking. <laughs> We're being followed. I don't hear anything. I tell you, somebody's following us. Horses, two of them. Coming down the same trail we took. They're slowing down. But they're still coming. friends in the next cell. I was afraid it was them. They're after the money. They'll kill us to get it. Oh, I don't think so. Look, I've ridden with them before. They're fast guns. They take what they want. They won't touch us till they see that money come out of the ground. I think we'll let them see it. First thing tomorrow morning. We won't be there that soon. We know that. But they don't. <laughs> Stay right here. 
out here don't move unless I tell you. Don't give him a chance, Smith. Gun him down. Thanks, but I'll take him alive if I can. you get down there? I fell. I, I, I can't get out. Help me, will you? You all right? Did you get them both? Yeah. Smith, don't ever leave me alone again. I need you. You're the only eyes I got. Come on. <laughs> How much further do you figure we've got? Well, it's noon now. We ought to be there before dark. Say, my head's panning me. Where's that medicine the doc gave me? Over in that pack. I'll get it for you in a minute. No, let me try. Uh, just tell me which way to go. It's about 30 feet straight ahead of you. The ground's level.
What's wrong? You almost got yourself bitten by a rattlesnake. I, I guess I owe you my, my life, Smith. Sure glad you got eyes to see for both of us. Yeah. Well, from now on, if you need anything, you just sit still. I'll get it for you. tree you told me about. There's some uh, jagged rocks down at the foot of it. That's right. Well, what are we waiting for? Looks like we made it. Where is it? Look for the biggest rock around. There's a log near it. Money's under a little rock next to it. You sure didn't bury them very deep. We were in a hurry. I sure do want to thank you, Smith. Delivering me here safe and sound. Even digging up the money for me. By rights, I guess I ought to give you a reward. Let you keep a thousand or two. But I'm greedy. I want to keep it all for myself. That's what I figured. But it won't work, Jack. That's not what this rifle says. What does it say? You really want to hear? Well, listen good. Throw it away. I dehorned that thing a long time ago. When I found out you could see again. When was that? That rattlesnake back in camp. You heard the Avery brothers a half a mile off. All of a sudden, you couldn't hear a rattlesnake ten feet in front of you. There'll be another time, Smith. I got my eyes back anyway. Next time, I'll have my own gun. You got your eyes back, all right. But you want to know something? You still can't see. Carnival time in Denver when we got back to town. And no one minded the nonsense that went on. For the strange adventure had ended as all of us had wanted it to. The working men from the farms and mines who had lost their savings got their money back. And the bank opened its doors again. As for Thad Janik, he played blind man's bluff and lost. He proved a truth that those who wear a badge have always known. That every man has five senses but a lawman must have a sixth sense. The sense that warns him when a rattlesnake's coiled and ready to strike.
Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, wake up. Wake up, Johnny. We got your dog. day on the Denver police force. Then, in the first few minutes after dark, my partner George Romack and I earned our whole day's wages. The two we'd caught were young and reckless, the kind Chief Richards had little patience with. Jim, give me a hand. Who's that? That's a junior burglar. Found him in front of his store when Baker Street. Lucky they didn't kill you. George went in the front, I took the back. They came out the back. And you got hit stopping them? And only a couple of kids, Chief. When the kid takes a pot shot at you with a 45, he stops being a kid. Hey, you know, Smitty, one of these days that soft heartedness of yours is going to help graduate one of these young punks from petty larceny to, to murder. Your murder. Somebody has to take a chance with kids like that, Chief. Now, one thing's certain. They'll never try going straight. Would you go on over and have Doc Anderson take a look at that? It's not too bad. What are you doing? I'm giving you a vacation. Three days to let your arm heal. I told you it's not bad. Smitty, so don't push your luck. You no good around here with a bad gun arm? Now take three days off. That's One that. more word and you're going to get it without pay. Well, like I said, I love paid vacation. <laughs> you a drink. Chief Richards just told me how you and Romack nabbed them sneak thieves in my warehouse. Uh, George and I just happened along at the right time. It's all in a day's work, Mr. Flynn. Well, I want you to know I appreciate it, Tom. Huh? Bartender, Smith can't spend a nickel in here tonight. But it's Give yellow. everybody a drink on me. We're going to drink to the best lawman in Colorado Territory. The Whispering Smith. <laughs> Who is he? 
Well, whoever he is, he sure took a dislike to you. what I'd like to know. He belonged to you. He's my brother. Johnny. Oh, Ma's going to kill you when she finds out. You live around here? We can't. Just out of town. How am I going to get him back there? You ought to sleep it off in jail. If you'll be responsible for him. I'll help you get him back to town. Oh, oh thank you. Come on, go. What did you do to my boy? He's a little sleep. He'll be fine. You let him get drunk. Didn't I tell you to keep him out of the saloon? I don't believe I'd take it out on the girl. Who are you? Name Smith. Whispering Smith. That's what he called me just before he jumped me. Heard my name and went on the prod. You mind telling me why? I heard about you, that's all. Heard about Whispering Smith, the Denver lawman. Well, that's half an introduction. Now, who are you folks? Name's Gates. Just three of you? Don't you have a husband? Not anymore. What's your name? Cora. Have we met before? No, never. Son, you want to take it a mite easy on that drinking. You don't handle it too well. You know, women folks will be in a bad way if you get thrown in jail. Good night. Ma, I couldn't help what you. Thank you. Now you know what to do. I know. Get on with it. All right, Ma. You near ruined everything after all our plans. You fool! Ma, 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 How many times? How many times did I tell you the way they hounded your pa? Hunted him like he was a mad dog till that smith shot him down and let him die in the gutter. Because your pa killed a lawman. You want him to hunt you? You want to die in the mud? That ain't vengeance, Johnny boy. We're going to do better than that. We're going to do a whole heap better. You're going to kill him, Johnny boy. You're going to kill him and go scot free. That's vengeance, Johnny boy. Mr. Smith? Wait, please. Oh, Mr. Smith, I... I need your help. What kind of help? It's Ma. I just gotta get away from her. Why? Well, you don't know what she's like. The way she treats us, Johnny and me, why... She whips us. Cora, are you making this up? Look and see. I, I just got to get away from her legal, so she can't ever come after me again. I won't be no trouble to you. Honest. All right. Come along. <laughs> Smith. I'm sorry to wake you up so late, but we need a room. Protective custody case. Oh, the poor thing. I'll get you some of my daughter's night things, dearie. Tomorrow we'll try to get you squared away. But tonight, don't you worry about a thing. 
This way, dearie. We'll take good care of you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Good night. Fancy Cora. That's good enough. I'm finished, Ma. Johnny boy, you shoot him once for me. You say to yourself, this is for my sister Cora, and then drill him dead center. Why do you hate him so much? 
Because he turned you down? No. Because he killed Paul. I remember that night they brought Paul in, all bloody and cold. Whispering Smith. Ooh, I just wish it was me tomorrow. I'm going to blast him apart. You know what? I wish it was you, too. You cute enough. You can get yourself drunk and start a bar brawl good enough. But can you stand up sober and gunfight like a man? I can gunfight good enough. But I ain't no man. When? When did you ever treat me like a man? You've been whooping me like a cur dog ever since I was old enough to walk. In that saloon last night, when I heard his name, it was just like all the hate in me come boiling up. And I'd have killed him. With my bare hands if I could. But that's all gone now. Maybe, maybe he beat it out of me. I don't know. Johnny boy, you ain't going to let me down now. I waited 10 years till you was old enough and good enough with your gun. Don't throw it all away. Don't stop now when we're so close. I ain't stopping. Go get your vengeance. You and Cora. I'll get the first notch in my gun. That kid draws so fast you can't even see him, Smitty. He makes that 45 sound like a Gatling gun. You said there was a lot of talk. Did you hear any of it? Oh, I couldn't get close enough. What are you going to do, Smitty? I don't know yet, George. He's just a kid. Well, you just better draw your fastest and shoot your best. That's all I got to say. And for once, I go along with Chief Richards 100%. You aim dead center, Smitty, because kid or no kid, that boy will kill you if you don't. You say he fans his gun. Does he square away to the target and stand for a second or two before he draws? Yeah. Yeah, I think he does. Sounds like one of those naturals. Aims in his head before he even draws his gun. Well, how's that going to help you? Oh, George. He's used to shooting at a stationary target. Come in. Can I see you, Mr. Smith? Alone? Yeah, you can see me alone if you want to. Be careful, Smitty. He's not wearing a gun. Besides, he doesn't want to kill me until after I'm fired, do you, Johnny? See you later, George. Sit down. Well, Johnny? They're saying in the saloon that you're gonna lose your job tomorrow, for sure. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? Ma does. She doesn't want me to kill a lawman. That's sensible. You can get in a lot of trouble killing a lawman. Your father found that out. Do you know who my father was? Sam Jessup. Tell me about him. What was he like? He was a killer, Johnny. Worst kind. He killed for fun. Just for the thrill of it. There was a sheriff. An old timer. Gone fat and slow. He tried to arrest Jessup in a bar. Jessup spit whiskey in his eyes, blinded him. Stuck his gun in his belly and pulled the trigger. Six times. Now you're lying, he didn't. I was the old sheriff's deputy. My first law job. I 
caught Jessup trying to get out of town. We shot it out. All I remember is when I was little. We had a lot of fun together. He'd come home and we'd wrestle around. And I'd holler and he'd laugh. He laughed a lot. Yeah, he did. He laughed when he shot the old sheriff. But uh, he did say he was good to his kids, so I guess he wasn't all bad. But I've got to tell you something, Johnny. I didn't regret killing him. And I still don't. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Mr. Smith. You going through with it? I got to. But I'll tell you one thing, though. When I kill you tomorrow, I won't laugh. More than an hour since the council meeting started. Wonder what's taking so long. Well, Smitty ain't holding him up. He said, believe him or believe the gate punch. And that's all he told him. Look at them. Vultures. Smitty, how'd it go? Well, that's just the way I... Smith! You know what to say. I'm off the force, Mrs. Gates. Just the way you wanted it. I'm calling you out, Smith. For what you've done to Cora. I got a brother's right. Cora's a liar. <laughs> I'm sure. I missed you. You've been practicing on a stationary target, Johnny. When I moved, you couldn't track me fast enough, but you came close. Girl's dead. Cora? You take it easy. It's too late to help her. Guess it was too late a long time ago. Your mother will have to be jailed, son. Killed a girl while attempting murder. She's still my mother. I want to go to her. To Johnny Gates, a scarecrow would always be a symbol. A symbol of what a mother can do to her young when she feeds them only on hatred and revenge. Thank you.